So in the box, we get this, which is a nice little case, actually. I do like it when we come with proper sort of material cases like this. I've had other lights which come in, in just foam cases, but this is quite, quite nice. It's stylish and it's very compact. And inside, you'll find everything packed in quite compactly. You have the power cable here and the the adapter for it. It's quite quite a chunky boy, I'm not gonna lie. It's quite big. But here is where you'll find the light, and that is extremely small. I was actually very surprised by this. Um, I didn't expect it to be I mean I have big hands, but it is smaller than my hand. Like my hand span is <laughs> is bigger than this light, and that's quite impressive. It is bicolour, so just so you're aware, when it says X100, it does take 100 watts of power, but bicolor lights are less powerful than daylight. Um, so it won't be comparable to a 100D from a different brand, for example, but it will be comparable to other bicolor lights. Then you see you have the little reflector ring that's in there. Very cute, very small. And you have the light battery itself. You can see we've got a little power charge here. Mine came with three, 70, 75% or so battery in here. Um, that's quite interesting. Um, oh, what's this? I didn't open this yet. It seems to be some kind of lanyard or some kind of carrying case, perhaps, like carrying. Okay, so you can hold it over your neck. Is that for the light? I don't know what this is for. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, you do have these things here, which you can loop it around if you want. Not sure why you would do that, personally. I don't know why you'd carry your light around there, but, it, you know, I'm sure someone has a use for it. So let's take this out of the way and have a look at the light itself. If you get the Pro Combo, you also get this balance mount here as well. So I'm going to include this in the lineup so you can see everything really sort of closely. Power adapter, I don't think this needs much explaining. Uh, you plug it into the light and it powers the light off of power. What I find more interesting is, is this, that it comes with its own, sorry, dirty table, it comes with its own power battery, which isn't something that you usually get with lights like this. I've got like a few different brands and none of them come with their own battery solutions. You have to kind of buy that separately. So when you get the Pro Combo, it includes it in the package. If you're gonna get any of them, you should definitely get the Pro Combo version because it makes more sense because you get both of this this balance adapter and you get this with it as well. I found that powering this light off of other batteries is a bit more tricky because you have here <laughs> this little rubber grommet when I can get, get it out. Oh my God, I hate rubber grommets, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so you can see here, you do have, this is where you plug in the 24 volt power in and you've got the type C in here as well. And so you can actually power this off of other batteries, but you need to get one that's approved for 100 watt hour power delivery, as well as the cable itself needs to also be approved for 100 power delivery. I'll show you this right now. Um, I have one of these batteries here, and this is like a 250 pound battery, right? And this has a USB out as well. So the USB-C here only has 65 watt hour power delivery over USB-C. So when you plug it into the light and try and power it from there, I'm just gonna turn this on. then look how bright that is. If I turn this around, you can see here in the numbers here that I can turn this all the way up to 65 and then it starts to tell me up here and flashes PD 65 watt. So it's basically capping this to 65 watt hour power delivery because that's only what this cable or this battery can, can do. So you have to be careful when you power this over other batteries. However, Obviously, they've engineered one that works directly with their light. And here is where you've got the rubber grommet. Another one. <laughs> These uh, rubber grommets will uh, be the end of me. So you can see here that it just clicks into place. And you've got a really nice small package here. Like, I really like how they've designed this. And when you turn this on, then you can see 
that up here, you can go all the way up to 100%. And that's incredibly bright. Like, look how overexposed everything is. Um, this is overpowering my big light here, which admittedly I have the light above me at 40%, and that's a 160 watt hour. And this is a 100 watt light. So yeah, it goes extremely bright, and it has amazing 2700 to 6500K range. So you can go all the way down to, I think tungsten is around 3200, if I remember correctly. And then daylight is around 55, 5600. So you've got the full range there that you'd want to, to match anything, which is really, really good. The only thing that I've noticed, oh, there we go. We've got the fans kick up. You, can, you can't even hear that. It's the first time I've actually seen the fan kick up because it's on 100%, but I can't hear anything at all. Like I'm, I'm gonna bring this closer to my mic. I can barely hear it from this distance. The mic might pick it up better. But yeah, it's incredible how silent this is compared to some of the other lights that I've got. The only thing that I have noticed is that when you step down the brightness, there is a little bit of a color shift. So I don't know if this will happen on camera, but around, uh, maybe it was at tungsten that it was happening more vividly. Ah, oh, it's just really barely, you can barely see it. There you go, did you see that? That color shift there, when it hits like 4%, it changes. So I think, I mean, I've seen this with other lights as well, to be honest, it's like something about powering it very, very low. There, there, you seen that? That color shift there happens at like this very low percentage. Um, but again, I don't, I don't think that is much of a problem. It's weird, it's, it's just the 4% mark. 3% was fine, 5% is the same, 6%, 7%. So it's something about five and four percent has a weird color three percent is back to normal very interesting i don't think that's much of an issue because it's it's uh <laughs> yeah you can just switch to one of the other percentages and, you, and you've got a fine like no one's gonna be really doing it at this low percentage anyway i think i think it's just sort of at the lower ranges of the temperature so i don't think it's much of a problem no, that was the only thing that I noticed that I thought would be worth pointing out. So I'm going to compare it to, to this light here. Now this is considerably less expensive, but in terms of size, it's very, very similar in size to the actual unit, not including the battery. It does have a battery built in. So you can see, like, from a portability standpoint, this light and this light is very, very similar in size. But the, the level of output is just, it's insane how much difference this is. This is, look, this is 100% on this light. You know, I'll even match the uh, color temperature. So uh, let's make it 5600, right? This is the level of light output. It's, it's, it looks tiny in comparison to, I'm even going to keep it on while I turn this other one on. I'm just gonna turn this on here now. And just just watch as it completely blasts. Like that that's incredible. The fact that they can pack this much power into this thing here in basically the same size as this is incredible. And I have other I have other lights as well, which uh, are bigger than this and are not as powerful as this, which is impressive. Now I just want to uh to show you the, the, the fact that this has a mount on it with its own accessories. Now, I only have this one accessory with me because it comes with this particular package. They do sell other things like a little mini soft box and they have like a soft dome thing that you can get. Now, you've got to do this little locking thing here, um, which is nice and sturdy. This kind of reflector is actually really, really useful. Basically concentrates the light into one place. But you can see how it's now got this like very, very hot spot in the middle, which means that it has even, even if you need like a huge amount of light into a single area, this will really do the trick. You can see how much light that's, that's blasting here, you know? In fact, I'll, I'll take it off so you can see uh, a difference here. I don't know if this is advised because it's quite hot, but you can see there, like it's a bit more spread out. And the moment you put this on, it's getting a bit toasty. 
that hot spot appears and you get, like, my hand is completely blown out now. So if you need like a very high concentration of light, this really makes a difference. I use these kind of things actually for rim lighting. So to get sort of nice highlights behind the subject, it's nice to have like a concentrated light angle. You can use it for like sunlight uh, replication, things like that. It's quite a useful light to have. You've got some mounting points here as well, and you can put that onto um, a stand, which I do actually have one of these. So here's another sort of cheapish stand that I've got. So you know, you can, you can put this on here and you could, you could get a ball head mount for it as well if you needed, but you know, you can stand that up. But if you wanted to put sort of heavier adapters on this, because you might want to have a big soft box on this, the best thing to do is to use this balance adapter, which comes with the pro kit, which I recommend getting. I think it's called the, the black combo or something. There we go. And now this is what you attach to a stand. And it's great because it means that the threads on the actual light itself won't get damaged. Well, it will handle much heavier soft boxes. So I wanted to show what it looks like with sort of just a regular light stand. This is what you would use the, um, the bounds mount for. It's right, right here. Attach it to the light stand, just like any normal light, which is really, really good. It seems quite sturdy as well made of plastic, just so you're aware. Uh, this is plastic. It's got a little bit of a grip here, so you can kind of like inch it in certain different ways. It has an umbrella mount here, which is probably how I would use this because it's sort of a portable kind of setup. I would opt in to using the umbrella mount. and I don't have any umbrellas with me but you can get them for like sort of 10, 20 pound on Amazon. They're quite, quite affordable. But if you want to use other attachments, this is now capable of picking up any bounds mount accessory, which is quite, quite a standard really. A lot of the lights use them. I've got here one of these soft boxes. You can get them from any brand. I think Zhiyun actually makes Zhiyun, Zhiyun don't know how to say it. Uh, they make soft boxes as well. This one's by Small Rig specifically, one of their competitors. You can put any any soft box on there. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as it's a balance mount, which should fit on here nicely. <laughs> I haven't really thought about how this will look towards the camera, so I'm gonna just face this as away. And See here, a bit awkward to do by yourself because you can't sort of grip onto it. But once it's in, twist and it locks in just like any other light. So you can see, <laughs> huge, unwieldy, right? But it's holding it up just fine. Look, it's despite the fact that it's plastic, it's a very strong plastic, it seems, and it's really doing well to hold this thing up. There you go. So I'm going to turn this on. You can see I've got a grid on here as well. So I'm going to turn this on at full power and you can kind of see how much it outputs. Now, um, this light here that I've got on, you can't see it in view, but it, it is running about 40% of 160 watt, which is, what's that? Quick mass, 10, 16, 32, 64. So this would be equivalent to about a 64 watt light compared to this. So if this is at full power, it should actually overpower it quite a bit. Um, let's have a look. Let's also match the color temperature. I think I've got that at 5600, so let's match that. Yeah, and you can see, pointing at the light, you've got some bits which are, so I'm looking down here because that's where my screen is. But you can see how it's lighting up really nicely. Now if I point at myself, this is acting as my key light here, and this is acting as my fill light. And you can see the sort of difference in, jeez, uh, it is bright. I'm not going to lie, this is actually extremely bright. It is brighter than this one. If I turn this up to full power here, then you'll see it kind of overtake it. That's now at 160 watt. But even then, it doesn't, you don't see much of a difference, to be honest. Which is incredible, because I use this light, and it's a much, much bigger light, and, and it's got this unwieldy, like, sort of power box to it. And, and the fact that this can power a softbox to almost the same degree as this is incredible. I think like 
this is probably going to be my new go-to documentary filmmaking light. It's, it's so compact, I can fit probably like three or, you don't really need three necessarily, but if you want three point lighting, you know, you could have two soft boxes to have the fill and the, uh, the key light, and then you can have one of these with just the reflector piece, you know, one of these, to give the rim lighting from behind. And I think that's quite a powerful travel kit. Like, I don't think I have any other lights that I know of that are this small and this powerful to be able to, to do something of this, this caliber and such a small, and you can't hear it. <laughs> it's so quiet, like, there's a, li a little bit of a hum. I don't know if the, the mic will pick it up, but there's a little bit of a hum. But it's, it's something that will be really easy to take out and post anyway. And it's nowhere near as loud as the Ameren 60D. I've got one of those as well, which is also a, a budget light. It is less expensive, mind you, but it is only a 60 watt. So it's, it's not as bright as this. I will probably be buying more of them. I've only got the one so far. I wish I had the little attachments for the smaller soft boxes and stuff, but I, I would say that having a bigger soft box is better, especially for documentary filmmaking. You, you want to be able to, to, to really create a large space to fill in a light on a person's subject. So here's a, a really, really cool thing about having the uh, the Bowens mount separate. You can see it's separated from the light itself. And say you had like a studio, right? Where you had these set up as your studio soft boxes, um, but you wanted to be able to be quite portable with your light and you can take it you know, you, you go out places as well. You don't shoot in your own studio. Um, well, this is actually really cool because you can you can keep this standing and just basically just take it off and see you can have that just standing there waiting to be put back on when you come back and you can go and just, just pack this up in your bag, which I thought was a really, really cool little feature is that you had a home studio but you also have this travel one that you can just take off and then take with you. You know, with, with my other lights, I would have to pack everything down first or, uh, uh, to be able to do this, which is really cool. So I want to talk a little bit about, I think, the, the power delivery on the light and what I think about how long it can last. And the battery that it comes with is quite impressive. It's, it's, it's a 57 watt hour battery, which means that for a 100 watt draw light, like, like this one is, it can run about 30 minutes full power. You know, 30 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but I wouldn't run it at full power necessarily. I think, you know, I've even got this one on at probably around 60 watts sort of power draw at 40% for this particular light. So you could get at 60 watts, you could get about an hour's worth on the internal battery. And then if you use like an external battery, even like that sort of big one that had 65 watt power draw for it. Running this one at 60% on that, that's a 99 watt hour battery. So it will probably be about an hour and a half or so, potentially more. So so realistically, you can power this light for a very long time if you're not running it at, at full power, which you won't really need to. I mean, this is running at 3% and it's giving me a really nice fill here. I'm shooting at f5.6. I'm shooting quite, quite closed. So if you were shooting even more open, like maybe even, for interviews, you might want to do a uh, a 3.5 or something, perhaps, or a 2.8 if you really want the shallow depth of field. Then you could really put the power down on this by quite a lot because you don't need a lot of light to, to, to shoot with. It's perfect for a lot of things, you know, for, for traveling product photography. I think it's really good. Uh, you can set it it's so light, you can put it down on stands on a table and just have like lights around this product. For travel documentary filmmaking, I think it's amazing. Honestly, this is something that I do and, and I think I can really easily see having three of these or four of these in my kit even and being able to just clamp them. Like I've got these little these little clamps, which are very, very useful by the way, and you can just I could clamp the light onto this and know that it will hold up with the battery on it, which I think is, is incredibly useful to be able to put like lights out of reach in places you might not really know how to do otherwise. You know, with the bigger lights, you just can't do it because they're, they're too heavy, they don't clear from the ceiling enough. So there's just so many different possibilities. You could put it on top of a, on top of a camera as kind of like an event rig. It's such a versatile little thing. With these lights, I could, I could easily pack a very good travel documentary kit into a single backpack and like light stand. Two bags. I could fit 
easily three of these into into one sort of compartment into one of my backpacks because of the way that they're so thin and, and, and flat you could just stack them up i really like what jayan is doing here because it's 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 opening up a different way of of of, of filmmaking and opening up different possibilities that i think just make make our job as videographers and photographers much easier um, and they put it into this neat sort of package that is very easy to travel with and they are not necessarily the cheapest lights I don't think because it's doing something that no other brand is doing at the moment and I think if it's within your budget range and you are a very compact focused filmmaker or photographer and you need things that are light, are easy to travel with, then I think this is probably the best light of 2023 that you can get right now.